when we evaluate okay, all these derivatives, okay, all these derivatives okay, okay, uh, at x is equal to zero, okay, when we evaluate them at x is equal to zero, okay, each 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 derivative, yeah, each each n factorial f of let's say k of x, each kth derivative, yeah, uh, actually gives us a zero. It goes to zero. That's important. That's a really important point here. Okay, is that well, when I substitute in zero here, okay, well that that's going to be zero, and every single term is going to be zero. Yeah, and the first derivative when I substitute in zero for x, well this is going to be zero, and all of them are going to be zero. So that's going to fall off to zero, and the only place where it's not going to be zero is when we actually re achieve that there's no indeterminant in the term. Okay, which is on the nth derivative. So after the nth derivative, we end up with a constant term, and that's important. Okay. And actually, more importantly, every derivative after the nth derivative is actually going to give us a constant term as well. Okay, it's going to give us actually an integer value. Okay, that's important to keep in mind here. Okay, so how will I say this? Yeah, is that n factorial, n factorial of f of k, okay, uh, of x, of x, yeah, uh, oh, sorry, a zero is equal to zero uh, for zero is less than k is less than n. In other words, for all the derivatives uh, up to n, but not including the nth, the nth, the nth term, okay? It's equal to zero. Okay? That's really important. Okay? So that's that's our first important point here is that when we evaluate this term, this particular function, yeah, okay, uh, and all its derivatives up to the nth derivative, we actually get zero. Every derivative after the nth derivative is actually going to give us a constant term. Okay? Let's keep that in mind as well. Okay. I'm just going to try to get a bit of paper here. I'm, I'm actually running out of paper. Yeah, I knew this was going to sort of take a while, and we haven't really got around. Well, this we're we're just exploring things here. Yeah, so we're 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 moving along. This is going to be a long video. This is yeah. Okay, but uh, hopefully this particular detail will help us to help us to understand actually what's going on here. Okay, so that's the important. That's one of the important properties now of that particular function. Yeah, that we've that we've looked at. Yeah, so in relation to the function f of x. Uh, is equal to x to the n times a minus b of x uh, to the n divided by n factorial. We know that successive derivatives of of f of x, yeah, evaluated at zero, are going to give us zero, yeah, okay, uh, for all for all derivatives, yeah, okay, for all all derivatives, okay, okay, up to up to, but excluding, but excluding, excluding. The nth derivative, okay. The nth derivative, okay. That's it. That's that's important there, okay. And uh, what else are we going to need? Well, there's another important, uh, important, uh, I suppose, property of f of x is that if we if we evaluate, let's let's evaluate evaluate uh, f of x, okay, okay, uh, for when 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 x is equal to a over b. Minus x. Okay, so let's actually evaluate f of x when this is actually the case. So what do we get here? Well, we get f evaluated at a over b minus x is going to be equal to. Okay, so everywhere we see the indeterminate x, we're going to put in a over b minus x. So it gives us it's going to be a over b minus x raised to the power of n times. That's when we substitute it in here. Okay, and now we substitute in here. That's going to be a minus b times a over b minus x. Okay, raised to the power of n. All divided by all divided by n factorial. Okay, you can sort of see what's happening here. Is actually let's let's just let's just multiply this out. Let's get the common denominator and so on. So this becomes uh, it's a minus b of x over b raised to the power of n times. Uh, well, what have we got here? We're going to have a. So it's going to be a minus. Well, b times a over b gives us a minus a. Okay, and it's going to be minus times minus gives us a plus. And what we're going to end up with is we're going to end up with a b of x here. Okay, all raised to the power of n. And that's to be divided by n factorial. Okay, and just continuing with the algebra. Okay, I'm doing this very, very. Really, we're getting down to the nitty gritty. Here. Well, not the nitty gritty of it yet, but we're really walking along here. Yeah, in relation to actually how this this all this all going to work. Yeah. Okay. So when we look at this here, this becomes uh, a minus b of x to the n. And you can actually see what's happening here uh, all over b to the n. Okay, that evaluates to that. Uh, times a minus a is zero, and we have b to the x times n is actually b to the n times times x to the n, and that's all over n factorial. Okay, that makes sense. And the b to the n's cancel out. So what we end up with is we end up with uh, x to the n. I'm commuting these two uh, times a minus b of x 
to the n all over n factorial okay which is which is f of x okay which is equal to f of x <coughs> so what we now have is this yeah so clearly so clearly we have f of x uh, is equal to f evaluated at a over b minus x okay so these two things now are equal yeah okay now this is where the sort of some of the magic is actually going to happen yeah okay if we assume if we assume a uh, pi okay is a ra is rational okay Okay. That means it can be written as a fraction, yeah, okay, or it can be written as a rational, yeah, okay. Uh, so if it's a rational, then we can find, okay, so we can find an a and a b that uh, are elements of the of the integers. Actually, we say the positive integers, yeah, okay, and where where b is not equal to zero, okay, uh, b is not equal to zero, and more importantly, I suppose we could say that a is greater than b, yeah, uh, such that pi is equal to a divided by b okay so if we assume that it is rational yeah we should be able to find them two integers them two integers a b yeah that that gives us the that gives us the rational representation of pi now look what happens here yeah so what we actually end up with is this is that we end up with okay that f of pi okay f of pi I mean, don't forget pi is a over b yeah uh, is equal to f of f of a over b minus minus pi okay which is actually uh, f of a over b minus a over b okay which is equal to f of zero okay which is important so actually f of pi the function okay evaluate that pi when we assume pi is a over b is actually the same as f of zero okay now we know that this function evaluate as zero is actually equal to it's actually equal is actually equal to zero if that makes sense yeah okay it's actually equal to it's actually equal to zero okay uh, now let's just keep that in mind but what we also know okay this is really important now this is this is this is really really important yeah okay is that what we also know is that all of the derivatives of f of x all of the derivatives yeah of f of x up to up to the nth derivative yeah okay all the derivatives uh, have an indeterminate term in them uh, so when we evaluate them at zero yeah all the derivatives actually actually fall off to be uh, equal to zero the sum actually all falls off to be zero yeah so actually if f of pi is the same as f of zero okay well actually if this function is the same as this function well then what that means is what that means is this yeah okay so therefore okay uh, therefore the derivatives the derivatives okay the derivatives of the function uh, f of a over b minus x okay the derivatives of this okay uh, result result in zero they're all zero yeah okay with with the exception with the exception okay of the nth